Too little short for a stormtrooper. <laughs> What's up, nerds? Welcome to another episode of the Multiverse Report. We are recapping the week's nerdy news from Bloodhaven to Ego, the living planet, and everywhere in between. My name is Mike Gibson. With me, as always, is Steve Haller. What's up, Steve? Well, things. Andor. Things. Mostly Andor. If you haven't watched Andor, go watch Andor. We just talked for half an hour about it. It's really good. Yeah, we did. It's very good. Very good. You should check out our review of episodes eight and nine. Um, we're very excited about it. Um, and I'm, I feel like I was so, when it started, I was like, oh, yeah, 12 episodes. This is going to be great. And now we're almost done, and I'm sad. It's like it happened too fast. Yeah. Come back, Andor. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's funny because we go through these ebbs and flows with TV shows of – it was highly episodic and like 20, 30 episodes per season for years. And then HBO kind of started breaking the mold with that, with like The Wire and Oz and yeah. that sort of thing. And then everybody else caught on to these hour episodes for these epics. And we're getting, you know, uh, binge dumps of 20 hours of content. Right. And now we're back to <laughs> like watching this weekly episodic content. And you're just like, I need more. I don't mind that it's weekly. I'm cool that it comes out every week, but it just needs to not stop. (laughs) I am glad that they're already uh, getting ready to start filming on season two, though. So yeah, but we there's only going to be a season two. There will be no more after season two. This is the extent of casting Andor that we're going to get. Well, if they can Uh, sign up Tony Gilroy to do other things, do it. I'll take him in any corner of the Star Wars universe at this point at all. Um, Anyway, we're not supposed to talk about Star Wars this week. It's not even on the rundown. Um, but before we dive into our uh, proper list of stuff, I just want to give a, a quick shout out and a quick plug to another podcast that I guested on this past week. Um, as you uh, well know, last week um, was we recorded last week's podcast the night before Halloween. We talked about some uh, some creepy horror bonus uh, one shot stuff at the end of that episode. Um, and the day after Halloween or two days after Halloween, I guested on a podcast called pretty killer pod, pretty killer podcast hosted by Jordana Bressett. Uh, she is a, uh, horror aficionado, horror movie lover. And, um, I spoke to her at length about for, we talked for about two hours about the Halloween franchise and, um, our thoughts on, Everything Michael Myers related from his first appearance to his most recent one, Halloween Ends. As listeners of this podcast will know, I hated Halloween Ends, as I mentioned a few weeks ago. Um, Listen to us talk about uh, it on her podcast to see if she agreed with me or if we debated it. Um, But uh, regardless of what that might be, I won't spoil that. It was a great time. I... um, I don't have many other people in my life that can go in depth on the Halloween franchise the way that I enjoy doing. So it was great uh, for me to talk about. So if you're out there and you like the Halloween movies or just want to hear me talk about horror stuff and not nerd stuff for once, you can check out the most recent episode of Pretty Killer Podcast on Spotify. So that's my plug for that. And we're going to kick things off with a little bit of DC stuff, not a ton of major stuff but just enough that we thought it should be mentioned. It's kind of like miscellaneous DC updates and kind of um, another update on the journey of where DC stands post Warner Brothers Discovery merger, what, uh, is, what's going on over there. So uh, this week on an earnings call, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zasloff, our favorite guy. Of course. Of course. Um Nothing bad. He just re reaffirmed that Shazam, Fury of the Gods, Blue Beetle, The Flash, and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will all debut theatrically in 2023. None of them have been so far moved, pushed, canceled. Uh, I think only one of them was in danger of being canceled. Um, well, I don't know. We were worried about Blue Beetle once Batgirl got canceled. But right. um, another confirmation from the man in charge that all of these movies are still slated to come out. Um, Spinning off of that, 
The director and writer of Shazam! Fury of the Gods, David F. Sandberg, also announced this past week that Fury of the Gods is completed. It's a locked picture. Effects are done. Oh, everything's okay. done. Score's done. He's done. Uh, and uh, that film is set to debut March 17th. I believe that's going to be the first of those four DC films that we see in 2023. Um, really only a few months away at this point. Very excited about it. will be here before we know it, I'm sure. Um in other DC related news, we got confirmation that uh, HBO Max series Dead Boy Detectives, which for all we know could have been on the chopping block. We thought everything was on the chopping block. I was going to say, I'm after. pretty sure we assumed that one was on the chopping block. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's been some casting. Um, Caitlin Riley and Max Jenkins have been cast as two side characters in Dead Boy Detective. Um, no, I don't have like a ton of hype necessarily for that show. It's. Um, it's a spin-off of Sandman series, but it's not um, relative to the Netflix show, which, by the way, while we're talking about mm-hmm. it, this could have been a, um, a one-shot. But yes, finally, finally, Sandman has been renewed by Netflix for a season two. So isn't that wonderful? So those are two shows. I mean, one's HBO Max, so we weren't sure what was going to happen with Dead Boy Detective. But they're casting. It is still moving forward, not being canceled and not being sold for a tax write-off. And the Netflix version of Sandman, which is uh, mostly, seemingly, universally loved if you're not a racist or a misogynist jerk, um, uh, universally loved, is finally getting renewed, getting a second season. Very pumped to see that as well. Last bit of little uh, DC news to touch on here is that just this afternoon, newly appointed co-CEO of DC Studios, James Gunn, which we talked about last week, to much of my excitement, posted a short thread on Twitter this afternoon, um, kind of talking about, uh, you know, just the future of the DC universe in response to some certain hashtag campaigns that are unavoidable on Twitter. And he said, Opened up Twitter at the end of a long creative weekend to see many tweets to hashtag save legends of tomorrow and hashtag release the air cut. Now, uh, release the air cut for those of you that don't know, uh, David Ayer's director of the original Suicide Squad movie. And uh, by all accounts, that movie was very messed with by the people that were in charge of Warner Brothers at the time. Um, I don't necessarily know that his cut would be a better movie because that movie is real bad and has a real true misunderstanding of many characters, in my opinion. So I don't know if his cut would change any of that, to be honest with you. But um, ever since the release, the Snyder cut campaign was so successful in getting that done. People have been trying to get this happen. I don't think this is going to happen. Um, But James Gunn is referencing it. Anyway, that's the backstory on that. I am sure he probably was also referencing the, you know, restore the Snyderverse um, dumb stuff that won't go away on Twitter as well. But uh, he did not specifically mention that. But as you'll see, he goes on to address all these kind of campaigns. Anyway, um, many tweets to save Legends of Tomorrow and release the Air Cup and fan support for other DC projects over the years. I think that line is a way to mention the Snyder cult people without actually mentioning them. Anyway, he goes on to say, the majority of these requests were enthusiastic and respectful. As the new and first ever CEOs of DC Studios, Peter and I think it's important that we acknowledge you, the fans, and let you know that we hear your different desires for the pathways forward for DC. Although our ability to interact on Twitter has been lessened due to the workload of our new positions, we are listening and open to everything as we embark on this journey and will continue to do so for the next few years. But all our initial focus is on the story going forward, hammering out the new DCU, and telling the biggest story ever told, all caps, biggest story ever told, sorry, all capitalized, across multiple films, television shows, and animated projects. We invite all of the DC fandoms from across the multiverse and everyone else as well into this new universe. We can't wait to reveal more. So I think this is a first step, and I think a smart one, on behalf of James Gunn, to address these fan campaigns that have been plaguing Warner Brothers for way too long. Um, And I think it's, I think it's smart of him to do. And I think it's cool that we finally have a public face. Like this is like the first 
uh, this is like the the first kind of, hey, here's where we're at from a n- first ever public face of DC of the DC universe, film wise. You know, because whoever was in charge, Walter Hamada or whatever beforehand, like they weren't making statements like this. They weren't talking directly to fans about what was happening, what was going on. This is like Kevin Feige shit right here, you right. know? Which is what um, they've been pushing for. Which is what they've wanted. And I think I just was reading this like, oh, this is great. Somebody is addressing something and just like coming right out and telling it to our faces and not like letting us guess or speaking, talking through the trades or anything like that. Um, And it was refreshing. I was really excited to see that, you know, and this is like a pretty graceful way of saying like, we're not going to release the air cut. We're not going to save legends of tomorrow. Star girl got canceled this week too. We're probably not going to bring back star girl. Sorry. These things are dead. They're not coming back. Um, But we are going to move forward and do all this cool stuff. He's like, we got cool stuff coming down the line and I can't wait to tell you. Um, so it was just really refreshing to have someone, you know, this is the kind of like, like I mentioned last week that I finally had confidence in the future of the DC universe, which by the way, they're not saying DCEU anymore. They're just saying DCU. I right. think that's a rebrand along with like DC studios over DC films. Like this is like a new thing. It's just, there's kind of the DC universe, which I think is great. Um, way easier. Um, but anyway, like this kind of statement kind of helps me hold on to that confidence like oh this guy's in charge he's got stuff going and he's just coming right out and saying like more or less sorry we're not going to do those things that you want to do we respect you and maybe someday but not right now our we're focusing on moving forward and and that's that so i don't know i really liked hearing that from james gunn i think it's um a good kind of first step to uh kind of showcase his new role a little bit so absolutely yeah. And that should be, I mean, if if what they're looking for is their Feige, then having them rebrand and bring it all under this umbrella and have Gun make statements like that seems like it's they're they're working in that direction. Yeah, I mean, because there, I, like, I can imagine if something like um, I'm trying to think of one of the many things that has derailed DC projects or something in the past, like. Uh, you know, like if when like years ago when it was first rumored that Henry Cavill wasn't going to come back as Superman, that he was done. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like if we had and like we didn't think we never got closure on that. We never got an official statement from Warner Brothers at all until he showed up at the end of Black Adam. Like we never got any kind of official statement at all. And I feel like if that kind of controversy and the like fan nervousness or reaction was like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? He's gone. Is he coming back? What's going on? What's going on? You know, if they had somebody like James Gunn back then, he would have been, he maybe probably could have come out and given some kind of like, don't panic, it's all right, we're just kind of reshuffling some things. You know, like, just just a way to make us feel like everything's okay, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, I don't know. I'm excited that we kind of have that in James Gunn now, seemingly. Hopefully that continues. But that's all we got for DC. We got some um, interesting Marvel stuff. Or at least one quote unquote interesting. I don't know. Uh, Does it make it more interesting? That's the, what we're gonna talk about. I was gonna um, say the second the second one, there's more interesting coming. More, yeah. More uh, interesting because of what happened. Um Yahya Abdul Mateen the second is in talks to star as Wonder Man in the previously announced Wonder Man Disney Plus series. Uh Black Man. That series himself? was announced. What's that? Black Manta himself? Yeah. Um, Yahya Abdul-Mateen, if, if you're not sure who we're talking about, you if you're a nerd, you likely have seen him before. He played Black Manta in Aquaman. He had a very big role that I know this show came out a few years ago, but I still don't want to spoil anything for people if you haven't watched it. Yeah. Very big role in the Watchmen HBO series. And he was also in the most recent Matrix movie yeah so this dude is cleaning up nerd money left and right and he's possibly getting even more by joining the marvel cinematic universe as wonder man uh he would be joining he was in the most in in your neck of the woods he was in the most recent candy man oh yeah that's right that's right he was also in candy man um which i never saw i heard it was all right i like the original was that a i was gonna say was it a remake or a sequel or I think it was kind of one of those that's 
it was kind of like a both okay kind of thing not quite um, evil dead 2 maybe a little beyond that but uh yeah 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 i did watch evil dead 2 on halloween night by the way it just nice. never never gets old no it it's doesn't. always so fun that and Army of Darkness, i really could just watch whenever yeah i know i got yeah that's yep. like peak bruce campbell <laughs> i think it was last year i think last year i watched all evil dead movies oh really and season one of Ash versus the Evil Dead, like, th- nice. like that was like the... during my October. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, they're all great. Nice. I, Army of Darkness is wonderful too. I got to get back on that too. I haven't seen that in a little, well, since last year, I guess. Um, uh, anyway, enough Evil Dead talk. We're not talking about that. Um, Yaya Abdul Mateen the second would be joining Ben Kingsley, who has been announced that he's reprising his role as Trevor Slattery in the MCU. That. Um, how um, that became a recurring role actor. is just amazing. I don't know. Like the they they took the horrible turn of him being the Mandarin but not the Mandarin in Iron Man three, and then like made that somehow make sense in Shang Chi, and now he's coming back again for this. <laughs> like yeah, okay. So you do you hate the you hate the twist in Iron Man three? I don't, but it like the uh, the general public seemed to despise it like i thought it was fine i loved it yeah i thought it was great i thought it was great but yes yeah, so i think that was like almost the beginning of the as far as the marvel fandom is concerned why aren't you giving us exactly what, what we, we want, want? <laughs> why aren't you giving us the obvious yep. thing that we want um and the answer is because that's boring and not interesting mm-hmm. um now i don't necessarily love that guy pierce called himself the mandarin at the end of that movie and you know was like glowing orange or whatever but um i thought the the decoy thing was really great um but yeah i agree i would not have thought that it would become a recurring role but i feel like in the mcu the mcu they're they kind of lean into fan service now and then um well and this one makes sense with wonder man yes yeah because wonder man is also an actor right yeah um, it does make sense, but I feel like if, if you're a side character that blows up, you're going to come back in some way. They're going to write you into something. So we're which is definitely why seeing Madison back, right? I was just going to say that. Oh. <laughs> I was just going to say the exact character that Madison's coming back and I cannot wait because I love her. Oh, it was great. So much. So much. I mean, well, look at, I guess, you know, look at Wong. Yeah, like, yes, and Wong was all over She-Hulk, and he's been in so many... This is Phase uh, 1. Yeah, He's phase been all over Phase, phase 4. Phase Wong. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he just, like, yes, Wong is Wong, but, like, he's definitely secondary to Doctor Strange in most facets, and now he's the Sorcerer well, Supreme and everywhere. I was just saying, not anymore, because he's a Sorcerer Supreme. Right. And he's got a, you know, he's got a gal pal in Madison. Yeah. Now, that I'm... He- he got me on a technicality because I was gone for five years. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, That's okay. Great. Makes sense. Um, but anyway, Steve, I mean, it's it's not debatable. The quality of Yahya Abdul-Mateen's uh, acting is not debatable. He's a great actor. Correct. He's great. Um, does this make you excited about Wonder Man? It, most of the time, casting things don't move the needle both of our discussions today casting things are moving the needle for me like wonder man seems intriguing enough and if they they've i guess they've shown us enough in recent things uh, recent shows they've shown us in shows yeah um (laughs) that they can vary things enough to keep it interesting and keep it fresh and if this ends up being a you know They've done period pieces. They've done like genre pieces. If this can just be, you know, some sort of whether it's a comedy, whatever, centered around like Hollywood and that whole thing, okay, you know, find its little niche and run with it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really do much for me this one. Yeah. I gotta say, because I just, I just so don't care about Wonder Man. That yeah. He's a he. This dude is a great actor. I love him, but um, it's gonna it's gonna be like I got to see a trailer to yeah. to care at all about this. Well, I mean, did 
Well, we're not going to make it a Star Wars podcast again. I was going to say, <laughs> were you going to care about Andor? Because like when that got announced, I half of me was just like, eh, why? I, and I, then I saw I, it, I and I'm like, oh, okay. I, I will say I was more initially... I cared initially more about Andor than I do care about Wonder Man right now. Yes. Right. Because I liked... I liked Cassian in Rogue One. And I was like, oh, he's cool. I'll see you. Uh, he's an interesting character. I, yeah, I guess I'd never have for thought me, one... Book of Boba Fett was worse than... Like, my initial reaction to them making Book of Boba Fett was much worse than when I heard Andor announced. Oh, really? Uh, Boba Fett was... Oh, like, for one, Boba Fett was never a character. I really... I was like, okay, well, well, great, yes. whatever. Same, same with me. Same. And it's like, all right, well, do we need a whole show? Like, what's it going to be? Why? Well, mm, I'm hesitant to say anything in response to that because it'll send us down a Star Wars right. <laughs> rabbit hole. I'm kind of catching myself right now. <laughs> and we're not here to talk about Book of Boba Fett, and it's already almost 11 o'clock at night. So Fair. And we still um, haven't even talked about Tales of the Jedi. Have you gotten to see that yet? I'm two episodes in. Okay. It's great. Perfect. I've only seen two. That means next week we might be able to talk about it. <laughs> yes. Anyway... I more or less agree with you. Yeah. But um, speaking of castings mm. that uh, may or may not move the needle for you on a show that you may or may not care about at all, or maybe see me like, like a show that maybe seems like we don't need at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Agatha Coven of Chaos. Agatha Coven of Chaos has announced some casting mm. this week. Um, Ali on Maria Dizia and the one and only Aubrey Plaza. Have mm-hmm. all been cast in undisclosed roles in Agatha Coven of Chaos. Um, Aliana and Marina Maria Dizia are both actors that look familiar to me. I don't know where I've seen them before, but Aubrey Plaza, I love from Parks and Rec, from Legion, and a number of other things. She's so incredible in Legion; it's out of this world, out of this world. How good she is in Legion. Which is funny because um, when you Google her, like Legion doesn't even show up in the top of the things list, and I'm like, she yeah. absolutely killed it in that show. Our our mutual friend, uh, a mutual friend of ours, just told me that he finished. He had a few weeks ago told me he had started Legion, and then yesterday or two days ago told me that he had finished all three seasons of Legion, and that it was incredible. I've only seen the first two, and I've never finished it, and I don't know why. And now it's all. Things are like the universe is pushing me back Why, yeah. towards finishing it. Um, I, I I've actually watch the been whole itching. thing over again. I, that's what I was itching. I'm like, uh, do I just go back and start at the beginning and experience it all again? Yeah. I and yeah. I think it, if it's the same friend I'm thinking of, like we had the conversation with him of like, you haven't seen this, go watch it. Um. Yeah, I yeah, think okay. so. And he did. And I think and uh, I think it's something that my wife would like too. So I might see if my wife wants to watch it. Like yeah, it might, might be a little it. a little out there for mine, but yeah, because it's um, weird. <laughs> yeah. So, um, contrary to what you said about Yahya Abdul Mateen being in Wonder Man, Aubrey Plaza being in Agatha Coven of Chaos does make me more interested in Agatha Coven of Chaos in a way because I love her as an actress. I think she's great. Um, I think she enjoys being a little spooky a little um like roles where you can't tell if she's like what side she's on yeah or if she's trustworthy Mm -hmm. and i think if we're talking about witches and dark magic and stuff like that then i think this could be a really good uh groove for her to find herself in and i mean it's an we don't know who she's playing we don't know if she's playing a named character or somebody new or whatever um, whether she's an ally or an antagonist, I don't know. Right. I think she would be good at any of those things. And I just think she's so fun to watch do anything that yeah. I'm in. Plus, and like Catherine Hahn also is another actress that is so good. Yep. And Same also deal. was on Parks and Rec. Um, so um, I don't know if there was any kind of connection there that ha- made that happen. But Right. So I guess um, it's funny because like Wonder Man, I was – there was interest in and this moved the needle farther towards interest for me yeah for agatha coven of chaos the needle was pegged at zero right like it was pegged in the wrong direction just and this is like bringing it up to okay i'm i'm 
I know I was going to give it a shot at least, but this is definitely like, all right, I'm 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 watching it probably as soon as I can when it comes out just to yeah. get, a, get a feel for it. You know, I just said it two seconds ago before you start before you said your sentence I said we just don't need it. Yeah. And I imme- after I said that, I immediately thought what do you mean you don't need it? You don't need any movie. You don't need any television show. Right. <laughs> like these yeah. are these are things that are made to entertain you and I and I then thought how I've recently I said this on a recent episode of this podcast that I've discovered that whether it's Marvel or DC or whatever, I tend to really like the dark magic creepy mm-hmm. corners of those universes whether it's swamp thing and john constantine and zatanna and etrigan and dead man right. whatever werewolf DC, by night and man or if thing. it's werewolf by night and blade and man thing and uh agatha harkness you know mm-hmm. in marvel um so i'm now i'm having i'm having a, a live real in time realization for myself about like, yo, why are you why are you saying we don't need this show? Like this is gonna be this could be a cool, scary, witchy, dark magic show. Who knows? Werewolf by night could be in this show. We don't know that. True. Man thing could be in the show. Blade could be in this. He's not gonna be Blade's not gonna be in the show. But um Elsa Bloodstone, other characters that any of the yeah. Yes, Elsa Bloodstone. Yeah, or like, a yeah, Bloodstone, exactly. like someone one of the Bloodstones. Yeah, exactly. So all of that plus Aubrey Plaza being in it now is making me a little bit more excited for this right. show just to get a little, little bit more taste maybe of something that we got from, I also loved WandaVision. So like, Hey, who cares? It's like a little, maybe taste of WandaVision, maybe taste of werewolf by night, maybe a peek into the world of like blade and vampires and things like that. Who knows? And who cares? I am all of a, I, you just heard me change my mind about this show in real time. So you know what? It can be done. It can be done. Everything's fine. There you go. I'm excited now. Other than that, in the Marvel world, all eyes are on Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It's coming out this Friday, November 11th. Steve, do you have tickets to go see Black Panther Wakanda Forever this weekend? Uh, Or are you planning to get them? I am planning on getting them. It'll probably be Friday morning. There you go. I'm going Saturday evening. So I guess uh, next week you can expect a reaction to Black Panther Wakanda Forever from the Multiverse Report. Oh wow, I forgot my normal my normal morning morning attempt is not valid anymore. What do you mean your morning attempt? You know how I always try and go first thing in the morning on the the Friday after to avoid the crowd. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's Veterans Day, so oh. the 10 a.m. is almost already filled up. Oh man. Oh yeah. You can probably find a one, a single seat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll figure that out. One way or another, yeah. I will be seeing it. Uh, does, is Movie Tavern only playing that? I pulled up the... that. I think that that's the only one that they're selling advance tickets oh, for that, that far makes sense. in advance, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, a week in advance plus. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah when I bought, I'm going with my wife and um, uh, two other friends of ours, and when we bought tickets it was friday was almost completely gone for evening showings and saturday barely had any we're going at nine o'clock on saturday nights it's gonna be a late night um because it's a two hour and 40 minute movie (laughs) yeah and you know there's gonna be at least 40 minutes of trailers before this thing oh yeah so it's gonna be actually you know there's actually a decent number of seats for that one there's more seats for that than there are for the 10 a.m on friday showing (laughs) oh geez all right crazy Wow. Well, there you go. Join us. Come meet us <laughs> if you want to come Saturday night at 9. Um, anyway, uh, a couple notes on Black Panther Wakanda Forever. First off, you all should know. Oh, we're not going to spoil anything. I don't want any spoilers. I don't know anything about this movie. I feel like they've been they've done a very good job of not spoiling really the plot of this movie too much or showing us too much in the trailers. Like We don't really know the full story of this. We know it's there's some kind of most likely antagonistic uh, relationship between Wakanda and um, Namor and his kingdom. But that's kind of it. And they just show us like beautiful looking shots from trailers, but we don't see anything that's like really plot heavy, which I love. I love so much. Yeah. 
And that, but anyway, I actually sorry, I was listening to, um, uh, I think I was listening to the, I don't know, something on the Ringer, um, something on the Ringer verse, but they were saying, you know, uh, people really need to stop putting any sort of the plot twists in these trailers. Yeah, man. Or like any sort of reveal, and it's like, yeah, for some of, like for some some movies in that. The the ultra nerds like us will know that there's a plot twist or where the plot twist is, but like yeah, yeah. Thankfully for this, they haven't revealed anything. I know. Yeah, and they need great. to keep it that way. <laughs> I yeah. assume and there's I probably that, one more going teaser. To. I don't know. I mean, we'll probably get some TV spots this week. Yeah. but I don't think there's going to be anything. I, there's not going to be like a big other trailer. No, no, there's been two big ones. But every once in a while, those little got. TV spots leak something stupid. So we'll see. Yeah, it's true. Hopefully they don't. That's true. Um, anyway, something that you all should know before you go see Black Panther Wakanda Forever, contrary to most Marvel movies, Wakanda Forever will not have a post credit scene. So you do not have to stay through the credits. Producer Nate Moore said, I think the subject matter of the film was such that it didn't feel appropriate to have then a stinger, meaning a post credit scene. Some people call this a stinger. Much like Avengers Endgame felt like an emotional experience that you also didn't need a stinger at the end of this. This felt like we just wanted to tell the story as it was conceived without an added bonus. So unfortunately, there isn't an end credit scene. So there's a mid credit scene, but not an end credit scene. Are you? Yes. Sure, are you confirming uh, that? Okay. I, I was that about is to confirmed. say. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say. He doesn't say that there's not a mid credit scene, so you might have to stay a little bit, but you right. don't have to stay the full ten minutes of. Looking yeah, at, you'll uh, see the storyboarded names. right, the storyboarded credits, and then the mid credit scene, and then there won't be anything at the end. End at the very end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They said the emotional weight okay. of this mid credit scene also is extremely um, really high. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. So definitely the stay emotion- for the mid credit scene. The emotional weight of the mid credit scene. Yeah. What could that possibly be? What's gonna be? Maybe something with Chadwick. As long as we don't see like a computer generated Chadwick. Photo. No, everything that I'd seen out of the screeners, like the the teasers for the screeners, and that is that like everything is very tastefully done and good. It, it's it's good. Good. I don't need another <clears throat> CGI actor brought back from the dead, especially not in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um. In a different interview, I believe it was a different interview, um, produced, same producer, Nate Moore, talked about the film's timeline and where it takes place in the MCU, saying, this movie clearly happens after Spider-Man No Way Home and Eternals. I think it probably happens potentially concurrent with Thor Love and Thunder. New Asgard does exist in our film and probably almost concurrent with Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which is coming out in February. So pretty modern. It's not like it takes place prior to multiverse things happening. He doesn't mention Doctor Strange too, but Doctor Strange took place after Spider-Man No Way Home, so maybe around the same time as that is happening as well. Um, so, I, I mean, I can't imagine that they're going to... I mean, I guess I don't know, because we just talked about we don't really know what is really going to happen in this movie... And I feel like there's probably going to be some twists and turns. Again, yeah. it's almost three hours long. It's going to be a, some twists and some turns that we don't see coming. And I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that they haven't even shown us in the trailers, um, which I'm excited about. 100%. They still, I've read a couple of interviews. They still are being very cagey about who the Black Panther is. If it's Shuri, if it's somebody else, like they, they're not saying anything about it. Um, and they, it's funny because usually the toys will find some way to leak it. Um, yeah. And I've seen a few Shuri toys. Well, that's but... the thing is like, even as, as crazy as it sounds, uh, a McDonald's Happy Meal has, uh, like two different of the figures. It was like two different Black Panthers and then also a Shuri toy and like a Koye and whatever. Yeah. So they're they're going out of their way uh, to keep it vague, even though they showed a still of it with of the suit with the dots yeah. that are Shuri. But yeah. you know, maybe there's multiple Panthers. Maybe there's I was, Steve. You and I are 
on so, the same page tonight, so, dude. It's almost I was like we've been doing to this say for a while. Exact <laughs> thing. I was about to say, what if all of them are like we're saying, yeah. like, what if it's Shuri? What if it's Corey? What if it's Nakia? Yeah. Uh, what if it's Angela Bassett's character? What if it's like the queen? Right. Why isn't it all four of them? Yeah. They can take turns or they can do it at separate times or whatever. Like that could be very true. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm excited about this movie, dude. I really am. I'm very excited. Yeah. I actually was More, just looking like, up. So you remember the days back in the back in the day, you know, back the way, days way back, back in when, the day. The day yeah, the days mm-hmm. back in the day. The days before when a movie that had a midnight release had a midnight release. Yeah, didn't we just talk about this? Yeah. With um Okay, was that with you? When I yeah, when I went to see uh what, what movie did I go see on opening Black night? Adam? Uh oh, Halloween ends. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Um there's a three. Yeah, but they just start showing them at Thursday. Like, yeah, exact I know. I was yeah. like, what? And there's no tickets sold for that, so I may be going at three forty five on Thursday. Oh, there but, you go, man. Um yeah. It's like what okay. Yeah, just say that it opens on Thursday. Just right. say if it opens not... on the tenth. <laughs> right. If you're not gonna open you're it. You're showing it in the afternoon. Right. What are you talking about? How do yeah. they, how do they not how do they how are they able to not say that? Right. Like yeah, next thing you know, it'll be opening on, like, they'll have a midnight showing on the Wednesday <laughs> for the opening. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Um, Yeah, this is the, this is, this is the most excited I've been for a Marvel movie in Phase 4, hands down. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm with um, you. It's probably the most excited I've been for a Marvel anything. I'm trying to think of the show's. I mean, I was excited by like about Hawkeye. I was excited about Werewolf by Night, but this is far and away, I think, the most excited I've been. I'm gonna have to find a night this week to rewatch the first one. I think. Yeah, yeah, it's probably that, it's probably worth taking another it. look at it. I'm not gonna rewatch like Infinity War and Endgame. Well, no. maybe I will. Who knows? Hmm. Who knows what'll come out of my viewing of Black Panther this week? I know I definitely anyway. don't have the the bandwidth to do that. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, I'm I'm trying, I was looking back through. Uh, the only other might have been No Way Home. But yeah, but I was like, oh yeah, you were on waffling that. on that one. Yeah, and I, I still am. I'm, I'm one of the, my, I'm the in the minority of people that didn't like that movie really that much. It was one but, of those um, where it hit me, and then I've, I've faded on it since. But it was like it hit the nostalgia buttons right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my big complaint about it. That's really all that it's doing. <laughs> yeah, much. yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, last bad of a uh, bit of Black Panther news. I think this is super cool. Wakanda Forever, the Black Panther podcast, a mini series of podcasts, debuted this week. It's a six episode series that launched on the third of November, just three mere three days ago, ladies and gentlemen, days and gays. Uh, it uh, features interviews with the cast and crew, um, Behind and behind the scenes and in front of the scenes of the new movie, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And it's hosted by Ta-Nehisi Coates. What? Okay. Uh, famed, yeah, famed author and writer of Black Panther. Is, is there someone very, who could very, very easily understand Black Panther and the weight of it and how it, like, hits? Yeah. Oh, the guy who wrote it for a while. The guy who wrote okay, the book cool. for, like, five years or <laughs> For an acclaimed run. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and a very good, very good run, and um, yeah. So he, I mean, he's. I think Ryan Coogler's been is going to be on it, and like the other members of the cast and the crew and writers and things like that. So, um, if you are hyped for Black Panther: Wakanda Forever and you need to know more information about its creation, check out uh, the podcast Wakanda Forever, Black Panther podcast. I think that's really smart. I think that's really cool of them to do, and I kind of wish more. I don't think it's feasible for them to have a podcast a six episode podcast miniseries for every movie they put out, especially if you're Marvel. Um, right. But I think like, you know, occasionally a big, like this is like a bigger event film. Like this is a bigger movie than Dr. Strange two was. This is a bigger movie than, um, Eternals, whatever. Um, no, Eternals. Never but happened, I, sorry. Um, actually I didn't, I, I didn't, also I didn't the, mind that as much as, I was going to say, I think I'm also in the minority that I kind of liked Eternals. I thought it was too long, but I didn't hate it. I think there was a lot of things that could have been better there, but there was a lot of pieces that had potential. Yeah. It's hard for me to watch a three-hour movie and say, 
there's nothing you could have cut out. <laughs> like right. not one bit of this. Well, hopefully like, Friday we will, or Saturday. Hopefully Friday they will. Friday we will. I, you know what? That kind of me saying that does make me kind of want to rewatch Avengers Endgame and see like, nah, you didn't really need that. Nah, you didn't really need that. Right. Because they're doing a lot in Avengers Endgame. They're doing it pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, there was and it's just a long story. There, there were things that happened. But even like, I love the Batman, and I just rewatched that. I was I spent two days on the couch this past week just feeling uh, like crap, and um, one of those days I half watched, half slept through the Batman, which is a three hour Batman movie, and even that movie that I love every frame of, I'm just like, you could have cut that out, you could have cut that out, you didn't need that. that out, you didn't need that. Like it's cool, like you're establishing a feel and an atmosphere and a pacing. So I get why you left it in, but like you could have made this easily could have been a two and a half hour movie. Right. You know, like you could cut a half hour anyway. Um, hopefully that's the case with uh black Panther Wakanda forever, which we will talk about next week. So stay tuned. Moving into comics news. I thought this was a super cool announcement from vault comics, a uh, pretty big indie publisher. Vault Comics has announced a new imprint, like so a subsidiary of itself, like Vertigo was under DC, that kind of thing, or like Young Animal was under DC. Uh, Vault Comics has a new imprint called Headshell. Headshell. Um, and Headshell is going to develop a, a line of original graphic novels featuring... Oh, sorry. I wrote this uh, stupidly. Um, original, uh, original graphic novels... Inspired by the careers and music of famous musical artists. The artists that have so far been announced include the Beach Boys, Def Leppard, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy, Red Man, and Metallica. So they're doing... The Venn original... diagram of those artists is... Wild. All over the place. Like, Which I mean, some... I, sit, I sit in the center there, and I think you probably do too, but there's sure. not... Yeah. Like... The, the, there's not a ton of common with a lot of those. No, I know. I know. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I think it's super cool. The first release is going to be the one about or having to do with, I guess I don't really know if it's about or whatever, Pete Wentz from Fall Out Boy. Um, it's called Dying Inside. Very emo name for a very emo dude. <laughs> very mm -hmm. emo band. Um, and the comic itself says it's created by Wentz, Hannah Klein, and Lisa Sturl. And... Uh, so it says it's based on the careers and the music of, so I guess it could be either one of those. Whether I don't know. The article that I read is a Hollywood Reporter article. It didn't specify, are these going to be biographical stories of the band itself? Is it going to be like a story that has to do with the lyrics to a song or something that happened to them in their career or like a dramatic retelling or a fictional retelling of something? Um Honestly, I feel like they probably read my comic book, The Amazing Shakes, and were like, oh, we should also do comic books about uh, bands <laughs> and um, uh, stealing that idea from me, Vault Comics. So you can expect a cease and desist order from my non-existent comic book lawyer um, any day now. Any day now, Vault Comics. Um, that's just a joke. Comics is not, um, comics is not a competitive medium. I don't believe. Um, and if it but is, anyway, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, exactly. Anyway, this is super cool. I like this. I like the idea of a band as big as Metallica putting out a comic. Like, yeah, sure. Every, every, everybody should put Every band should have a comic book, I think. Of course, I think that. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think it's super cool. I love, you know, like we talked about a few weeks ago, Weird I'm very, Al. I'm very interested in what the action comic book would be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, huh. keep an eye out for uh, future issues of The Amazing Shakes. You never know who might show mm. up. <laughs> um, but uh, I, uh, I don't know. I think this is cool. I think this is really cool. I like comics are a medium that is it's a very popular medium. A lot of people like it. Like if you want to further your brand, you want kids to discover who Metallica is. You know, right? Then yeah, this is a great outlet. For well, that. if you or want like kids to figure Boys, out who or, Metallica yeah. is, you put Master of Puppets in Stranger Things. Well, yeah, and then that revolt too. them back to the top of every chart everywhere. Yeah, that too. Which again, very smart business decision by them. And I think that this is another one. And you know, like a band like the Beach Boys, like you know, you get, those songs are still like in the consciousness. But um, there's definitely like drama and stories to be told there. Again, and again, I don't know if that's going to be uh, autobiographical or it's just like 
inspired by their lyrics or something like that. Like we yeah. talked about Weird Al has a graphic novel coming out that's like anthology stories based on his like goofy songs and stuff. So um, it's not like it's never been done before. But um, uh, actually, I don't know. The Beach Boys one I'm kind of up in the air on now because it depends on whether it's focused on uh, Brian Wilson or Mike Love because Mike Love is a total asshole. And if he's the creative mind behind that, then mm, that's not going to be Might not be the greatest. Might, 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 might not be the greatest. Um, Def Leppard, who knows? Like, I guess when I said the Venn diagram of all of those bands, Def Leppard doesn't really do it for me. But Yeah, I'm not really super into Def Leppard, but yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But check right. that out. It, it didn't it didn't say when the Dying Inside Pete Wentz Fallout Boy one is coming out, but that's just gonna be the first one. So I don't know when this is gonna happen, but uh keep your eyes open. Yep. Excuse me. Uh moving into this week in your local comic book store. You got Amazing Spider Man thirteen. Steve, are you have you been reading Amazing Spider Man at all I, the new run? No, I have been run I I haven't been running the read. I haven't been reading been this run. Read. I have heard some Big time complaints about it. The people are just like sick of the, I guess like they split Peter and Mary Jane up again. Yeah, and they people did. are like, like, what are you doing? Just like, let them be married, man. Like, let this guy have some character development. It's okay <laughs> to let him be married. Um, I don't know. Just people saying like, it's not relatable and they're trying too hard to make him act like he's a teenager when he's an adult now by this point. Like, let him grow. Let him be yeah. Spider-Man. I don't know. And I totally understand that. And, I've said this before on this podcast. Every time I'm like, I should try to get back into Spider-Man. And I pick up an issue of Spider-Man and I look at it as like, I have no idea what's going on. This all seems insane and unrelatable. And I put it back down. It doesn't feel like Spider-Man. I feel like we need Tom Taylor to write Spider-Man or someone to write Spider-Man the way that Tom Taylor is writing Nightwing. I think. I could see that. Now, That's, at the same time, like, I mean, it's Zeb Wells and John Romita Jr. that are on it. Yeah, I know. They're so no it's slouches like, at what they're doing. Right. But. It's just, it's not quite working... Maybe it's just not working for whatever's yeah. going on. I mean, that's what I hear. Again, I'm not reading it myself, but that's what I hear. Apparently, it anyway. somehow involves Madeline Pryor. Yeah, see, that is just okay. weird. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like clones of Jean Grey to get things moving. Yeah. That are also yes. devils, demons. Yeah. Nothing like clones of Jean Grey to make things very confusing and hard to get into. Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi, X-Men. How are you? Exactly. Uh, anyway, Amazing Spider-Man 13 is out. Batgirls, number 12. Batman Incorporated, number 2. Batman vs. Robin, number 3. Black Panther Unconquered, number 1. N- new number 1, just in time for the release of the movie. Captain America, Sentinel of Liberty, number 6. Death of Superman, 30th Anniversary, one shot. Talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's coming out this week in your local comic book store. Do a Powerbomb, number six. New number one for Fantastic Four coming out this week. Flash, The Fastest Man Alive, number three. Gun Honey, Blood for Blood, number three. Lady Hell, number three. Minor Threats, number three. Lots of number threes right in a row there. Ninja Funk, number one. Spawn, number 335. Spider-Man, number two. Star Wars, High Republic, number two. Superman, Son of Kal-El, number 17, the penultimate issue of Superman, Son of Kal-El, before it turns into the adventures of Superman. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number 134, Wolverine, number 27, and Wonder Woman, number 793. Hmm. So, Steve, as uh, I mentioned... You talked about the bands, comic oh. books about bands. Minor Threats is not about Minor Threat, right? I don't believe Minor Threats <laughs> is about Minor Threat. I don't know for sure. I just thought it was a cool title. It made, did make me think of the band when I saw it, which is why I put it on the rundown. <laughs> it was the but first thing that popped into me, my mind. I'm like, <laughs> yep, me too. Something tells me it's not about the band Minor Threat. Fair. I could be wrong. If it is, someone tell us. Let us know right. if it is. <laughs> we'll add it to the list. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I spent two days on my couch uh, feeling like crap this week. The only saving grace about those two days was the fact that I got to catch up on some comic book reading, and I read some books that have been sitting on my pile for a very long time, and I was very happy to be able to do so. There even though I didn't feel great while I was doing it, I was like, yes, I'm reading a comic book, even though I Check. feel like shit. Check. Yeah. Check. <laughs> yep. Did you I catch up on the Batman run? No. <sighs> no, because I haven't got that one from you. You bought me the one that oh, I'm missing. Oh, yeah. It's still sitting right there. You haven't gotten me yet. Yeah, yeah. I was supposed to bring that last week. Yeah, you didn't. No. <laughs> Someday. Someday. Or, I mean, I could come to you and get it. I haven't done that either. Yeah. So this is a two-way street we're living on here. 
I mean, we only uh, live like you... five minutes away from each other, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I finally finished the run of um, Dan Jurgen's run on Blue and Gold, Blue uh, nice. Beetle and Booster Gold, that I was really enjoying and then just stopped reading. But now I could read like four issues in a row and be like, hey, there's the end of that. Great. There you go. Loved it. It's great. Um, have you, uh, you still um, just sitting on a huge pile of books that aren't, isn't getting any smaller? Yes, but also grabbed, uh, I think I texted you about it. Uh, Ed Brubaker, Ed, Br- uh, Ed, yeah, Brubaker Ed Brubaker is hard to say. Uh, he did a little indie joint for the last, he's been putting it out for a while now, called Friday. And it's a weird, like, based, uh, it's a horror mystery uh, that's based on, like, young adult style uh writing oh wow but it works really well like he has it up on his uh site as a like you can pay whatever you want and i i i didn't um i I did the zero dollars to get into it to see okay let's you know the equivalent of going to the like it yeah the equivalent of going to the the store and like leafing through the first issue to see if you actually want to grab it and um it hooked me enough to you know grab the uh grab the first trade so it's it's interesting nice well written that's awesome uh really unique art style by um trying to think who was on it oh it was marcos martin so oh wow yeah sweet uh, a combo for <laughs> a, a wombo combo here so yeah <laughs> well, that's great cool and then also these um, came in these happy who was that? uh john taylor christopher did a um oh, couple of snap his own, um, like he does a couple of exclusive sales. Yeah. Where he does certain artwork. So the the negative space and the comic book or the toy covers are kind of his his deal. And he put them out. For those of you listening, Steve held up two uh, issues of Star Wars comics that have mm, incredible yep. cover art on them. Yeah. So, so yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about comics, real quick before we dive into one shots, we got to give a shout out to our friends at Funky Town Comics here in Camillus that just announced, I believe they just announced this past week, that um, they are opening a, or they're. They're moving downstairs. They're moving. They're moving, but they're moving downstairs in the same building that they're in now yep. to a much bigger space, a 3,000 square foot space, um, opening on November 19th, a couple weeks away. Um, they're renaming the name of the store to Funky Town Comics and Vinyl. They're going to have vinyl records as well as a slew of um, vintage and new toys. So there's going to be comics, there's going to be nerdy toys, and there's going to be vinyl all in one spot. I think um, I'm going to spend all my money in that one place. It's the only store I'm ever going to go to for the rest of my life. (laughs) Um I'm very excited about it. Congratulations to the team over there at Funky Town Comics. Um, uh, not to you know, not to pat ourselves on the back too much. This is something that you and I have known about for a little bit, and um, if it works out, we may or may not be somewhat involved in. I don't know about the grand opening, but you know, um, I don't know. They I, maybe I don't know if they've even said it to you, but we'll we'll talk after this yeah. episode. But they pitched a couple ideas to me about ways to involve. Uh, you and I in the podcast in um, nice. in with what they're doing at the store. So we'll be I'm excited more about than that. happy so, to uh, to support those guys. Yeah, and they are having. Uh, we should let you know they are having a grand opening of the new store, Funky Town Comics and Vinyl, on November 19th. Um, you can find it on uh, Facebook. All the information on that. Uh, they are located at 4300 West Tennessee Street, Syracuse, New York. One three two one nine. Yep. Um, Any local right folks? Near, it's right near your Saving Face Barbershop. Yep. Um, yeah, or the Kinney Drugs. It's on West Tennessee Street there. Yep. So, I uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out to them before we transition into one shots. We have uh, a few one shots and a ver- uh, four, four of them for you. And Steve's going to kick them off. So I will. Go ahead and as do soon that. as I get to the right Steve tab on Lord of the my Ringsy note stuff. sheet. Uh, okay. <laughs> The joys of tabbing through uh, various things while you're trying to run a podcast. Uh, (laughs) Okay. 
So, first one shot. A new audiobook version of The Silmarillion is being produced and will be read by Andy Serkis. So, Serkis in the past has recorded audiobooks for The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, no current release date yet, but he, um, I, I want to say it was on socials or something. He said he kind of dr- hinted to it and then it just immediately came out of like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's oh. this thing. So, he's, I feel like oh, he's... no. He had said he was going to be, in an interview I saw, he's like, he said he was going to be reading the Silmarillion soon. Oh. <laughs> he didn't say he's going to be paid to be reading it right. professionally for <laughs> a mass audience. So. Right. So, and that's then this, I saw this the next day. I was like, oh, that's kind of cheeky. Nice. Yeah. Um, I feel like he's got a good voice that I wouldn't mind listening to for a very long time while like listening to an audiobook. Well, for something like the Silmarillion that's about as dry as a popcorn fart, it's, uh, yeah, you need a good yeah. voice. Yeah. Um, Nothing like reading reference material in audiobook form. Yeah, right. I also think uh, he's a good choice. I mean, he's clearly a good choice for The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings trilogy. Do you think he did his Gollum voice I, he when had he was to reading have. those? He had to have. You think so? Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> kind of makes me want to <laughs> listen to him. Just for that. Um, yeah. I'm currently rereading um, the You are? Yeah. You're thinking of? Or you are? No, I am. I'm about halfway through. Doing my old uh, every, you know, three right. pages at night type thing. Yeah. Before I fall asleep. I, uh, I keep thinking about when is a good time to read that with my son. And he's only six. I don't know right. if he's like a little too young. Maybe I should wait till he's like seven or something maybe. Um but I'm not sure. I mean, it's it was written for kids, so right. it's not like he wouldn't. Oh, that's one thing I'm it. noticing 100 percent of like going back through and rereading. And I'm like, oh, this isn't. I remember when I read this as a kid, it was much better. And then I'm like, oh yeah, yeah it's written for kids. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. I think maybe sometime this winter we might try yeah. a chapter or two and see if he's into it or not. See, that's the nice um, thing of having a son a year younger than your son is you get to try all this stuff, and then I can just be yeah, like, and let you know hey, was goes. that the right time? <laughs> okay, no, we'll hold off. All right, so, sounds good. <laughs> Wait a little bit. You got it. Um, uh, okay, next one shot. HBO Max's The Penguin series has casted Kristen Milati, Miliati. Sorry, Kristen Miliati. I didn't see the second L, or so, sorry, second I. Kristen Miliati as Sophia Falcone. Okay. DC nerds flipping out about this, maybe. Uh, Sophia Falcone is Carmine Falcone's daughter. Uh, She was a character introduced in the Long Halloween, famous Batman story, and its sequel, Dark Victory. Um, Sophia Falcone has been portrayed in Gotham, the the Fox series Gotham already in live action. Um, but by a different actress. Uh, Miliati uh, has been in Fargo, Wolf of Wall Street, and uh, How I Met Your Mother. She's had roles in all of those series. Considerably shorter than the character in the book, so um, this uh, interpretation will clearly be a little bit different, as was the the woman that played her in Gotham. In Long Halloween and Dark Victory, she's known as Sophia Falcone Gigante um, because she's huge. She's just very tall, very built, very strong woman, uh, a force to be reckoned with. And it's kind of brought in by her father, Carmine Falcone, uh, as like hired additional muscle, uh, like protection when he starts feeling like he's in trouble in Long Halloween. And um, um, I'm not going to kind of reveal everything that happens to her in the stories because it's great. And those books are I highly recommend reading both Long Halloween and Dark Victory. If anyone wants to get into Batman, it's like a great way to get into it. Um, uh, but I'm very excited that uh, they are moving along with this character because uh, it's it's a uh, continuity with the books. And we, unfortunately, Carmine Falcone, spoiler alert for the Batman that I mentioned earlier, uh, dies at the end of uh, the Batman. And I thought, that uh, that character was so incredible in that movie. I like that they are moving forward in the series. Like, you know, of course there's going to be a power vacuum after Carmine dies. Penguin obviously is going to try to 
um, take over his gang. But yeah, why wouldn't his daughter come in and try to like run his operation or kind of get what's hers? So I think this is a smart move. It's a very intriguing move for people that are uh, fans of the source material. Um, and I think it's a smart way to go. And I'm very excited about it. And it's cool to see that the show is still, uh, I mean, we know that it's moving on. We've heard Colin Farrell talk about it. But um, anyway, that's all. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Seems like it'll be interesting. That's all yeah. we can ask for at this point. That's right. Speaking of interesting, Marvel Games has announced a new multi-game deal with EA. So Electronic Arts, huge, huge developer. Um, yeah. Also, not without its own controversy and you know phoning it in on many games and many things. Sure. Uh, deal covers three titles, one being the recently announced Iron Man game, which I didn't even realize got announced. Did we talk about that? And I missed a... I think I, we did. did. I think I it was a one-shot. That? I think it was like two uh, or three weeks I might have ago. read it. Dude, I don't I, know. <laughs> I don't, uh, we, I mean, all these episodes blend together. Yeah, there's just <laughs> too much crap going through. It's hard for me to remember. Uh, yeah. Plus two more action adventure titles that'll each tell a separate story within the Marvel Universe. So the the one good thing is EA tends to phone things in when they have exclusives. And yeah. they are not the only ones developing games for Marvel. So no, that should help out uh, the potential for the collaboration here. Yeah, and I mean... I feel like there was a while where, you know, like DC was cranking out those like Batman Arkham games yeah. and kind of like ru- ruling the superhero game area, yep. um, space anyway. But then we got that Spider-Man game, um, the Avengers game that was like, meh, and but Guardians. Uh, Guardi- Guardians was great. And they announced a Wolverine game. They announced a Spider-Man 2. They're announcing an Iron Man game like. I feel like Marvel game fans are um, about to be eating very well, mm-hmm. um, you know, from a variety of um, developers, like you just said. Um, oh, and Midnight Suns. That's coming out oh, pretty yeah. soon, I yep. think. Is that coming out this month or next month? Or uh, something? They pushed it to early 23, I think. Oh, that's right. They did. Like delay March, again. maybe? Yeah. Um, oh, but uh, real quick, speaking of del- uh, games that got delayed, um but I'm finally playing. I am uh, playing the Gotham Knights game oh, that nice. finally came out in uh, a couple weeks ago, late October. I, I'm very early on in the game, um, but I think it's really good. It's great. There's some. There are some similarities to the Batman Arkham games, but there's also a lot of differences. But uh, I'm getting used to it, and I so far I feel like the ch- it's it's a way to make it kind of stand on its own. I think it's really fun that you can you can switch between characters kind of whenever you want. Um, the Gotham City that they have is really great. The graphics are really cool. And so far, I'm digging the story. So, you know, Gotham Knights, if you're on the fence about it, uh, endorsed by this guy right here. Nice. And uh, oh, speaking of... Um, I whoop, lied. Nope, not... December nope, 2nd. Not, not. So you were right. Oh, I was right. I don't I know what... I can't remember soon. what got pushed, but something got pushed. It was not Mark I mean, Midnight Suns. I mean, this one got pushed a, it got oh, a while good. ago. I feel like it was supposed to come out like earlier this year and it got pushed so maybe you're thinking of this oh, maybe yeah. you're thinking of the in november Spider-Man 21 game. it was announced the game had been delayed until the second half of 2022 okay yeah and like spider-man 2 is not coming out till 2023 I'm, i don't think it's a date but right oh, that works. but i think both spider-man 2 and wolverine are supposed to come out next year so yeah hmm. they're getting a lot of my they're gonna get a lot of money from me it's gonna yeah. be more video games than i bought in one year in a long time yeah i think i think i'm with you there yeah i almost exclusively only play uh games based on intellectual property that i already care about i'm not <laughs> one that experiments on games <laughs> just like oh what's this about no oh does it have spider-man in it i'm not gonna buy it yep um uh anyway uh speaking of nightwing and um uh, Night- nightwing and friends <laughs> Nightwing and Friends, sure. Uh, this is not a ton of news, just a kind of a reminder, I guess, that season four of Titans has officially debuted on HBO Max. I have not seen it yet. Episode one has been described as shocking. I don't know why. I think it does introduce their version of Lex Luthor. And we know that uh, from the trailer that he's going to try to exploit um, his connection with Superboy, their version of Superboy. Um, so Lex, we'll see. But Lex episode Luther one exploiting something. No, no, that could never happen. Yeah, that's like his mo. Um, 
Uh, first episode came out uh, last Thursday. New episodes will keep continue dropping on Thursdays until the season is over. Um, and we've talked about before. I'm mixed on Titans, but I'm I enjoy it. I've watched every season, and it's um, you know. Uh, currently, it's the only place you're getting live action uh, Nightwing, live action, you know, Raven, Superboy, all those characters. So, like, it's fun to see those characters um, in real life running around fighting each other. So, uh, we'll see. Maybe uh, by next week, I will have watched an episode or two of Titans and I can give you a short recap on uh, what's going on there. But other than that, Steve, I don't know that I got anything else. We talked about comics, we talked about Funky Town, we talked about. Other podcasts that I was on, all these other uh, tangential things that I was um, planning on. I think we hit them all. You got anything else you wanted to bring up or talk about or want to call it quits for the night? Uh, only thing I'll talk about is uh, beyond our normal wrap up. Tuesday, go out and do your civic duty and vote because it is election, election week. Like It is election season, election week, whatever you want to call it. Certainly is a season. Cause, yeah, well, I voted damn, two days are- ago, so it's become a a season (laughs) yeah uh i did not vote early although we do have the ability to vote early in new york city in new york city we don't live in new york city in new york state um but uh my company does give me time off to vote so i'll be going tuesday and it doesn't matter if i stand on a line or not so um it's very nice of them to do that so yes um go out perform your civic duty and vote and um Vote for the people that you believe are going to lead us into a brighter future and not turn, not uh, figuratively turn the clocks back um, to the 1950s. That's all I got to say about that. There you go. And uh, I'm pretty sure if you're listening, you know what I mean by that. But, you know, (laughs) I'm going to keep it vague. (laughs) Yeah. Or just whatever the hell's reasoning. Um, Well, well, either, either way, after you're done scheduling your timing for voting, feel free to head over and like, subscribe, leave a review. Do whatever you want uh, to get a hold of us. Multiverse support at gmail.com, multiverse support.com, multiverse support on all yes. the socials. Find us, review us, leave notes, leave stars, leave an email. We'll read it. Beyond that, yeah. I think we'll we're good. be there. Um, uh, we'll be on all the socials, including Twitter, until Twitter melts down um, or becomes incomprehensible because it was bought by an insane rich person he's destroying the platform in real time it is mildly Um, hilarious that that's the only one that our handle isn't multiverse support so if that one goes we're at least consistent might make it easier yeah yeah um that's a whole rabbit hole that i'm not prepared to jump down (laughs) right now and it's almost midnight so until next time thanks for watching thanks for listening and we'll see you in the multiverse